Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and welcome to another episode of Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I'll give my humble opinion on them. To get the format out of the way real quick, if you'd like to submit your own question that can be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question for today comes from Matt, and it is, what are your thoughts on the new droning after death mechanic coming to Siege? A lot of players seem to think it's the wrong direction for the game. I gotta admit, the first time I read this question, my initial reaction was, of course the Siege community thinks that something's gonna be overpowered. We always jump to conclusions and think that something is going to be game-breaking. It is a tale as old as Rainbow Six Siege. The amount of times that this has happened is ridiculous. When Kali was introduced, when Zero came out, Tachanka, do you guys remember Tachanka, his rework? Everyone was saying that he was gonna be one of the most overpowered operators, that he was gonna get constantly sideline in ranks, but just a couple of days after he was officially the release is like, oh no, yeah, he's uh, he's still pretty terrible and no one wants to play him anymore. Like, th this happens every single time. And so I will admit that when I see questions like this, and I see people making these statements, I am a bit skeptical, but after playing on the test servers for a couple of days, yeah, I think that people might be on onto something with this one. <laughs> So the reason why I'm not as doom and gloom when it comes to this upcoming mechanic is that I feel like this is Ubisoft's attempt at trying to level the playing field when it comes to information gathering between the two different teams. Defense has always had the advantage. You've got normal cameras, Valkyrie, Mozzie, Maestro, and Echo drones scattered around all over the place. And if you do get taken out, more, more or less, you're gonna be able to relay information to your team and help out throughout the round. And while that is, is still technically possible on the offensive side, it is much more difficult. And so for all the people claiming that this is too much power and influence for one player to have if they get taken out, like there should be a big penalty for getting dropped, th then why are we okay with that on defense? Now the counter argument to this is, well, they're drones, Matt. They can drive around. It is completely different from something that, that is stationary. And that's where I agree. This is where things get a little bit tricky because yes, that Valkyrie camera is incredibly beneficial for someone who did get taken out. It is still going to only be in one position. And so while you can still be really helpful, it's nowhere near the power, some people might argue, of something that can physically move around the map. On top of that, uh, this is something that's gonna be available for everyone on offense. You don't just have to play a specific character to have this benefit. And so instead of needing to require maybe a brand new operator that has this passive bonus, everyone on offense can do this. And so it is a gigantic upgrade to their team. This is where I think we kind of run into some problems. Now, one idea that I really like that could be a potential solution to this problem is that once you get taken out, your drone gets a battery. And so you can only move it for a short duration. Let's say 15, 20, whatever, whatever they land on that gives you the opportunity to get it into a place where you could maybe watch a flank or get onto the objective and make a quick call out, but you're not going to be able to constantly like wiggle in and out of the objective room, finding information and making precise callouts throughout the entire round. You're gonna have to have it be in a stationary spot just like every other gadget in this game. That could be one way that Ubisoft solves it. Now, don't get me wrong, I realize that this would still be a massive buff to the offensive team, but I believe that that's sort of the point. Ubisoft has the numbers. They know that defense on average on almost every single one of the maps in the game has a distinct advantage, like a massive advantage, and they wanna level that playing field. And so instead of just upgrading all of the offensive operators in some other way by maybe increasing their weapon damage or giving them an extra gadget, like that would cause a lot of problems in and of itself. They're trying to infuse one of the most important aspects of Rainbow Six Siege, gathering information and trying to to make that more of a core mechanic for the offensive side. And I think that that is commendable. Now, will it work? <laughs> it remains to be seen. As I said, I am skeptical along with everyone else, but I think with some fine tuning, maybe with like a battery system or some other way, I do think that this could be a great way at improving the game in the long run. The next question comes from Kyle and it is, what do you think about the year six season two reveal where operators disappear? 
I don't really have any issues with this one. I believe that this change was geared more towards the competitive scene. Your pro players or people that just want to take ranked seriously, this has been a complaint for a very long time. Because bodies in this game are client side, once you get dropped, that means that wherever they did get taken out, that body could fall seemingly anywhere. And this has caused some issues. I'm sure this has happened to you, I know it's happened to me, where someone will be holding an angle in the middle of the hall Hallway, they'll be prone on the ground, but when around the corner, it just looks like an operator that got dropped from earlier in the match. But because it's client side, you, you can't see them, but they can see you clear as day, and so they promptly take you out. That is incredibly frustrating. And so by removing that aspect, it will hopefully alleviate some of those problems. Now, I will admit that if you're someone who is playing Rainbow Six Siege for more of the authenticity, you want things to be a little bit more realistic, even though this game really isn't that realistic if we're being honest still having these things disappear from the map and having an icon pop up is a bit immersion breaking when i enter into a room where things have clearly popped off and the entire ground is now littered with icons it does take you out of the experience a little bit. It doesn't tell the same story like it used to. And so I think that Ubisoft has done a good job at making it uh, transparent so that it doesn't get in your way. It, it is something they know that people aren't going to be too thrilled by. And so a long story short, while this is just another thing that Ubisoft is, is chipping away at that authentic, tactical, realistic FPS experience that many people bought Rainbow Six Siege originally for, I think in the long run this is going to be a good thing for those players that do want to have a more competitive environment. The next question is, are you disappointed that EA has announced Battlefield 6 will be on last-gen consoles? Will we not get a truly next-gen Battlefield? Yeah, I was a bit disappointed when we learned about this, but I also understand why it's happening. A lot of people haven't been able to upgrade to the next-gen consoles. I was incredibly fortunate and lucky when I was able to pick up my PlayStation 5. Like, I was surprised that I was able to get one, and a lot of people haven't been as fortunate. And so, to expect a game that has all hands on deck, I think they have like three or four development studios working on Battlefield 6. Like, they clearly are going all in on this game. To expect them to only put it on the next gen consoles was probably asking a little bit too much like this is EA that we're talking about they want to be able to sell as many copies as humanly possible a lot of people are still on those systems and so clearly they're going to be trying to cater to those players as well now the reason why I was disappointed by this news isn't because I want old gen console players not to be able to experience Battlefield 6 like that's not the reason at all it's because these consoles are old at this point and I really wanted a truly next gen Battlefield this is what happened with Battlefield 4. If you guys remember, that was on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, and because of that, DICE had to reel in a couple of their ideas and their vision for the game to be able to accommodate those older consoles. A great example of this is that eventually they added in the, uh, the shield gadget for the support class. They wanted it to be able to have a secondary weapon, like if you were playing as uh, Rainbow Six Siege. They weren't able to do that because those systems didn't have enough memory to be able to implement it properly. And so they had to basically just scrap that idea, implement a shield, which is one of the most worthless gadgets in that game, because it doesn't have that secondary components. And so the worry that I have is that this could be something that happens with Battlefield 6. They have this great idea or they want to do something special, but because they have to make these accommodations, they're not able to do that. Now, is that going to be an issue for Battlefield 6? Who knows? It's just pure speculation at this point, but I'm I'm really crossing my fingers that they are focusing more on that next gen experience and that we are going to be getting something special. The next question is, what do you think of the idea of them adding another game mode called ranked solo queue? It would act as normal ranked, but you could only queue if you were by yourself. At this point, I'm completely in favor of a solo queue. I know that in the past, I've said that it's probably not necessary because the system in place already tries to pair you up with other people that are solo. So in a sense, there is sort of already a solo queue if you look at it from that standpoint. But as we all know, that just doesn't work all the time. Yeah, a majority of your games might predominantly just be with other people that are also solo, but then you'll get those couple of matches where it's a five stack or three other players are clearly working together. And then you with all your bunch of randoms are at a clear 
disadvantage. And so just having the peace of mind to know that everyone that is in this queue is going to be solo queue or maybe like solo and duos so that there's a little bit, at least a little bit of flexibility. I think that that would be an, an, a great addition to Siege. The only thing I can think of for why Ubisoft hasn't done this yet is that they're just not confident enough in their average concurrent player base to be able to sustain it and have short matchmaking. If you now have a casual, unranked, ranked, and a solo or duo queue, that is gonna split up that player base even more. And so especially at those higher levels like Platinum and, and, and Diamond, where there's already a few and select people that are already in that range, if you split it up even more, if queue times are like five, 10 minutes just to find a match because you want to have some accuracy with that ELO, with that matchmaking, uh, th that could be a really serious issue. People eventually could be like, hey, you want to play Rainbow Six Siege? It's like, no, I don't want to sit in a queue for 10, 15 minutes. I don't want to be in a queue longer than these games actually are. Like, that's not, that's just not fun. And so that might be one of the biggest reasons for why they haven't done it. I, I really have no idea. All in all though, I would love for Ubisoft to try something like this. I am someone who solo queues almost exclusively. And so to have an environment where I know where everyone else is also in that same boat along with me would be a weight off my shoulders. Are we losing because I'm bad? Let's be real, that's probably the reason a majority of the time, but also it could be because they're a five stack and communicating really well. We would no longer have to second guess that anymore because we would know that everyone is on a level playing field. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is what it for today's episode of Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Do you like the direction that Ubisoft is going with Rainbow Six Siege in regard to the new droning mechanics? Do you think that's gonna be a good thing for the game, a bad thing? Give me your guys' reasons why. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, please leave a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy.